Hey guys, it's Dan from Shasta Bubba Adventures, and today I was planning to do a hike in Glacier National Park to Upper Two Medicine Lake, and with the possibility of doing the Dawson Piedemachen Loop in the morning, uh, because the weather's supposed to be better tomorrow. But I'm sitting here at the trailhead observing some pretty severe weather right now. I'm trying to decide whether I want to face this or not. There's about 40 mile an hour gusts right now with driving wind, driving rain and snow and white caps, major white caps on the lake. I think we're going to have to give it a try though. Can't go this far and just bag it without even trying. So let's go. I was parked at the campground that was at the very end of the lake and I decided to gamble that the lake was acting as a wind tunnel and once I got into the woods it started warming up and would get a little shelter from the trees and so far that's working out still getting rained and snowed on and this is kind of interesting I'm only a couple of tenths of a mile from the trailhead this pond is frozen over it's about two o'clock in the afternoon and there's little bits of snow here and there in the woods too so it might be camping on snow tonight season there's a boat that travels along this main two medicine lake and carries folks to the end of the lake if they like to do day trips and the trails at the end and not have to hike there and there's this awesome little shelter here to admit this but I'm starting to see some bear tracks in the snow. They're old enough that they're rounded off from the rain. But I don't know how long it takes to round off the snow in the rain. I made it. Now I get to just look around. 
There's the facilities. And there's the lake. Pretty impressive so far. Looks like that's the dining area and I believe a bear box instead of a bear pole, which is a little bit easier to deal with, I suppose. And here's the lake. Wow. Here's one of the sites over by the outlet of the lake. I don't know, does it look like home to you? Home with a view. It's pretty stormy as you can tell. I got my camp all set up so I'm ready to dive in there if I need to. thought I'd be uh, honest and come over and eat by the dining area, even though I don't think it would make much difference on a night like this. Well, it was about five and a half miles to come up here and only 750 feet of elevation gain about. Conditions like this are why I always tell myself there's no such thing as shoulder seasons in Glacier National Park. There's really only July and August for summer, and outside of that, I always pack as if I'm going to be caught in a snowstorm or have to camp in snow. And uh, that way I don't get sorry in situations like this. I got the gear that I need. Another new bit of gear that I'm trying out are these gloves. These are Japanese fisherman gloves and I really like them on a day like this. They're waterproof, windproof, and they've got a fleece lining too. So my hands were completely warm and toasty and comfortable the whole way up. Not any problems with that. <clears throat> and this might be a good night to have brought the stove, but I didn't. I'm eating cold again tonight. Just uh, triscuits and summer sausage and some Swiss cheese, which will, should be fine. At least it'll be quick. And then I can jump into the tent and warm up. Don't know what tomorrow will hold. It's supposed to get up to 60 degrees and be sunny, at least back in Kalispell. And I don't know what it's going to be here. I'm expecting a couple of inches of snow up there and uh, probably pretty windy. So good chance I'll get up to the pass and decide I have to turn around and come back. But that will be okay too. At least I will have seen it. All right, that's it for tonight. See you tomorrow.
Good morning. Well, it was definitely a dark and stormy night last night. I believe the wind was a pretty steady 30 miles an hour and uh, gusting occasionally to 45 to 50. Pretty impressive noise it made coming through the trees. And my thermometer says it was 23 degrees without the wind chill, so it was very cold. And uh, my, I was pretty okay except my feet. I couldn't seem to get warm and so I put on an extra pair of socks and that didn't do it and I got out my the bread bags that I use to put on my sleeping socks to sit to use them in the wet shoes if I have to get up during the night. I figured plastic bags on my feet would work. That didn't work. But uh, eventually I uh, got out this Patagonia pullover and zipped that up and slipped it over the end, the foot end of my quilt and that cut the wind and it finally worked. Now I tell you all that just to explain on my top, on my core, I was only wearing a light Polypro and this Nunatec PCD pullover so really impressed with how toasty this PCD pullover is. Um, I also had the hood up and didn't have to wear any other headgear. So in that extreme condition this is a wonderful toasty and good uh, wind cutting garment. So I'm very happy with this. Well it's still a bit windy as you can tell and uh, so it's gonna be play it by ear on whether I make it up and across that high exposed ridge. The ridge is over 8,000 feet and people usually say you don't want to be up there uh, in high winds and it was predicted to be in the 30 to 40 mile an hour range. So I'm gonna have to see what that's like when I get there and uh, make a decision on whether to turn back or push on through. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day though. Uh, things have cleared up. Um, another example of how windy it was last night. It rained about half the night, uh, but my tarp was completely dry this morning, so it got wind blown dry. Looking forward to getting on the trail and getting warmed up. I'm wearing quite a bit of stuff getting started uh, just because I don't have to worry about keeping it dry. This is uh, just an overnight and I'll be home tonight. So. Might as well stay warm and just shed layers as I go. This morning as I came stumbling over to the dining area to get my food in the near dark, I came across this, which I can promise you was not there last night. <laughs> that is pretty fresh. So sometime during the night, the grizzly bear paid me a visit unbeknownst to me. That's a pretty clear bear track. With all the stormy weather yesterday, I probably forgot to mention that the North Shore Trail was closed, is closed, for the season because there's a dead moose on the trail and a grizzly that's feeding on the moose. And that's why I took the South Shore Trail, if you were wondering. And now I'm at the junction for Dawson Pass. 
and wander up there and see what it looks like. And here is No Name Lake, which is another good stopover spot if people were hiking the Dawson Pitamakan Loop. A little higher elevation than Upper Two Medicine and more sheltered, but as you can see, the lake is partially frozen over, so might have been a trade off to stay here. Trail maintenance in Glacier is usually so good and quick that I'm guessing this tree might have just fallen last night. They certainly had the winds to do it. like an incredible long shot given the conditions when I started yesterday that it would be clearing in blue sky by the time I got up here today that is the gamble that I planned on but sure didn't expect that to come true last night given the conditions I was experiencing and there at last is Dawson Pass the trail gets super steep up towards the top of the pass. It's like climbing stairs.
corner to see this even worse path. Serves me right for being on the north slope in mid-October. That is Pinawakan Lake on the right and Lake of the Seven Winds on the left. And I am headed down this pass and on the far side of that is Old Man Lake. And you can just make out the whole route back to Two Medicine Lake way off in the distance. down out of the high country I figured all of my problems were over but this couple inches of snow has melted just enough that it's slushy so it's almost like I'm walking in a puddle Well, 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 how much weather can you squeeze into one overnight trip, right? Certainly had some extremes. It's been a fantastic adventure. Overall, looks like today will be 16 miles and 3,000 feet elevation gain, and the same in loss. And I can't tell you how thrilled I am to do this hike. I've been backpacking in Glacier Park for over 20 years, and there were only two real well-known hikes that were still on my bucket list and the first was the Gunsight Pass trip which I got to do earlier this year and if you missed that one I'll make a link put a link on the screen right now and the second one was this the Dawson Piedemachen loop and who would have thought that I get to squeeze this in in the middle of October just incredible fortunate summer for me for hiking Despite having to cancel my big trip that I had planned due to wildfire and COVID. So in the end, this was a pretty good consolation prize, knocking off these two great, great hikes. I had a lot of gear that worked really well on this trip, and I'll have to make individual review videos of those. That's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.